My lovely imps, have you heard the good news? That's right. Former President Donald Trump, former steak salesman Donald Trump, former coin, collectible coin seller Donald Trump, former Iraqi dinar revaluer Donald Trump, former um, real estate tycoon, because he's not, he's not as much of a tycoon, he's had to sell a lot of his properties, former lots of things Donald Trump has been convicted on 34 counts of falsification of business documents. Now, that's a pretty major occurrence because that now makes him historical once again. He made history previously by being the single most indicted U.S. president in the history of America. Well, that would make sense. I, I did say U.S. president. But anyway, you get what I mean. Uh, and he has now made uh, history again by being um, the... <laughs> by being the first uh, former president of the United States convicted of a felony. And, um, he's really made Nixon look like child's play. Yeah, he kind of has, right? He kind of really has. He's, he kind of gave Nixon a run for his money. Um, but yeah, now he's the, he's the first former president to be a convicted felon. Um, and, uh, and also, uh, of note in this particular situation is that, uh, the charges that he, um, that that uh, that he has been convicted of um, are at the state level, so uh, they not only count as federal crimes because of their nature, but they were uh, handled at the state level, which means he can't be pardoned of them. Now, there's a lot that we have to talk about with this, but needless to say, this has been an incredibly hilarious uh, event um, for anyone who uh, has been following American politics at all, and for anyone who has even a, a slight dislike of Donald Trump. This particular case has been going for a really, really long time. It centers around um, hush money, as it's called, that was paid to a uh, adult performer by the name of Stormy Daniels, and the decisions that were made um, in, in by Donald Trump in uh, in in paying that hush money, uh, he, as it turns out, he broke a lot of laws trying to uh, keep that money on the down low and make sure that nobody knew about it. Um, now, a lot of people uh, are gonna say, "Well, doesn't this kind of seem like a fairly low stakes thing to get Donald Trump on in the end?" And of course the answer is, yeah, it is kind of funny that of all of the demented and horrible stuff that Donald Trump has done, that they finally got him on uh, hush money paid to an adult performer. But, it, yeah, it is, it, exactly. As Gay Fesh says, it is kind of like getting Capone on uh, tax fraud. Um, that it, a lot of, yeah, it kind of has echoes of that, doesn't it? Um, but, but honestly, I gotta say, it is kind of funny. Because usually, people in Donald Trump's position, uh, b being both a billionaire and also being a former president of the United States... That type of person in the United States of America usually never sees even, like, technical repercussions for their actions. In most cases, people like that, the worst that they might get is tanking their future opportunities at growing their power further. You know, like Richard Nixon not being able to participate in politics in any way in the future because 
he so became so unpopular. That was the repercussions that Nixon had, but Nixon didn't have any of anything like this, you know? Um, but he's still able to run, so how does this work? We're going to talk about that in a minute. Because, of course, with all things American politics, uh, it's never so, like, clean as to say this is a victory or a loss or anything like that. It's never that clean. One thing I will say, though, is that it was very, very funny. Um, the meltdown has been um, predictable, but um, absurd. Uh, we had uh, we had people like uh, like Tim Pool, uh, uh, famous centrist Tim Pool, explicitly calling uh, for war, um, which was uh, which was certainly interesting. Uh, let me see if I can find that exact tweet. Actually, I wonder if he deleted it yet. I would be surprised if he actually still left it up. I screenshotted it, but I realized I left the screenshot on my uh, other computer. Do we got the do we got the war? <laughs> I forgot about this one. The first outlaw president, <laughs> and it's a f fucking AI art of cowboy, cowboy Don cowboy Donald Trump with what appeared to be lipsticks, like different sizes of lipstick or chapstick, in a bandolier that only goes on one side of his coat. Actually incredible actually amazing and beautiful uh i i found a funnier tweet in the uh in the process of trying to look for his war tweet oh did he delete no here it is we found it here we go war he didn't even capitalize it and he just like this is oh god it's so sad war tim pool C centrist tim pool war you know, you, like, it's, it really is one of those you first moments, right? It's like, come on, Beanie Boy. Go, pick it up. Let's see it. Let's see it. You, you couldn't even put an exclamation mark on your post. You really think that you're going to, like, be the shot that's heard around, around the world? Come on, man. It's, it's bad. War. 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 Um, I tried to find some peak copium from all over the web. And in fact, I wanted to give a special thank you to uh, my uh, lead moderator, Silent, who uh, did grab me a bunch of screenshots from uh, the Donald.win or Patriots.win. Um, it used to be the Donald.win, now it's Patriot.win or whatever. Um, but uh, we went through them and it just there was there was nothing funny in there it was just it was just pathetic like i i'm not kidding you uh i could sit here and show them up on stream but it was it was just like it felt like the grumbling after a completely predictable outcome when nobody had any energy left you know it's like uh, you order a pizza on DoorDash and it gets delayed like 13 times and then the pizza arrives and somebody's like, God damn it, the pizza's cold. And everyone's just kind of like, you know, it's like everybody knew the pizza was going to be cold when it got delayed immediately. So there was no energy. The, the, they, they are quite literally like copiumed out. They don't even have like they've, they've, they, they've melted all of their sinuses and they're just kind of shuffling around like zombies at this point. The energy is just gone. It's, it was sad. It wasn't even funny. I thought we were going to see all kinds of like screeching. We saw, we, of course, you see the predictable ones where people are like, this is it. This is the line in the sand. But it's like, we heard that one already. We've heard all these. We, 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 January 6th and all of the post-January 6th posting was, like, the most demented stuff ever. And I already did a video on that. So what am I supposed to say? Like, oh, they, they're, they're repeating the same thing they said before, but with less energy this time? It's just, it's just sad. They're just, like, flopping around, like, gasping fish. But they're getting towards the end, it seems. 
And uh, yeah, so the funny thing, the funniest thing that I've seen post the Donald Trump uh, conviction is a bunch of new prison abolitionists, you know, which that was very funny to me. Um, the, 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 all of a sudden there were these nobody accounts all over social media being like, I just, I can't believe even somebody that I don't like, like Donald Trump, who I definitely don't like, you know, with my account that I made yesterday, I do not like Donald Trump, but I just cannot stand the idea of him being put in prison. I'm a prison abolitionist. All of a sudden these, these, all these born yesterday prison, prison abolitionists rolled out of the woodworks to be like, yeah, Donald Trump is, a, you know, putting him in prison is across the line. And I never felt compelled to, you know, uh, talk about the millions of Americans who are in prison on, on bogus ass charges. But, you know, Donald Trump was the one. Um, yeah, all of a sudden, all of a sudden prison abolition is a really, really, really popular position among accounts that have 13 numbers in their name. It was, uh, whew. that was the funniest thing I saw, really. Um, other than that, a lot of liberals had their field day. Uh, there were definitely a lot of liberal blue checks, um, being, uh, really having fun on Twitter, which... That was another takeaway. I learned that a lot of liberals have blue checks these days, which is kind of funny. I wonder if maybe they bought the blue checks just as like a special occasion so that they could be, you know, so they could torment and taunt people like Tim Pool. But if you go to like a lot of these posts, the top posts will all be blue checks making fun of Tim Pool and stuff. Like... Like, great example here. I'll just show you right on the war tweet. We got how Tim, what do we do? Oh, this guy's actually a right winger. Sorry, my bad. We got in the event of a war, will you take your beanie off? War, what is it good for? Making a joke. Congratulations on committing treason on Twitter. Will you still wear the beanie even in combat? Clown, clown, clown. With previous times that Tim Pool has called for war. I'll believe it when you attend a pool party without your beanie on, doofus. Send your beanie in first. The battle with male potter, pattern baldness is difficult. Hats off to you. Uh, a reaction gif of someone laughing. You know, bring it. Stop it. Fed post. So... I learned yesterday that there were a lot of liberals with blue checks. Um, <laughs> Jeff Tiedrich. Okay, Jeff Tiedrich was having a great time. Jeff Tiedrich posted like 14 times in an hour after, the, after it was announced. And his first post was just him saying like ha 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 over and over and over again. Let me see if I can bring it up. In fact, I know I can bring it up. Hold on. Here we go. I'll just, I'll just show you. Okay. This is this was Jeff Tiedrick when it went through, okay? For those who don't know who Jeff Tiedrick is, Jeff Tiedrick is like the he's like he's like the platonic ideal of a Trump reply guy. This guy would be commenter number 1. When Trump was on Twitter, he was like every time Trump tweeted, this guy was like, "Shut up, pumpkin. Oh, did you forget your fake tan today, honey?" Oh, what are you gonna do? Grab her by the pussy? Like that was his game. He was the he was the original orange man bad guy. Okay, and uh, super lib. And this was his tweet. I'll just read it out. I'll do a dramatic reading. Ha 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 Ha, Donald Trump is guilty as fuck. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 oops, I mean how terrible for guilty as fuck Donald Trump. You know, good for him. You know, he finally got his day and uh I can't say it was the most creative tweet, um, but he seems happy. So, you know, it's a lot of ha's, which 
means you know how funny it is. The more ha's, the funnier it is, you know? It belongs in a museum. You know, um, I feel like, I feel like if we're going to put any tweet into a museum, it's got to be the Jeff Teterick, Joe Biden comes in on a scooter and uh, says, sup motherfuckers. I think it's got to be that one, you know? That's got to be that's got to be my one if we're going to put Jeff Teterick in a uh, in a museum for anything. It's got to be He liked that one enough that he tweeted it twice, word for word, identical, just actually retweeted the same one. Which, you know, credit where credit is due. Um so okay, the libs were having fun on Twitter. Some of them bought blue checks just for a special day. They were making fun of the uh low energy conservatives. But now, let's get down to the brass tacks. What does it actually mean? Is any of this going to change literally anything whatsoever about the election? Um, and the answer is, I don't know. I, I do not know. Um, to me, it does seem like there is probably some small percentage of, like, purple voters, you know, swing voters who were like, well, I don't, I don't like the idea that Donald Trump's a convicted felon. That seems improper to me, but I don't know how big that number actually is. And I don't know if there is even good polling information on that. Um, and also I don't know how many of those people are like, aren't already convinced before the sentencing went through, you know? Um, so it's really hard to tell if this is going to actually touch any of the, like, demographics that are going, that are likely to vote in this election, if it's going to nudge the needle even at all. And as far as whether or not things are going to actually happen to Donald Trump, um, well, I hate to tell you this, but Donald Trump's team has already announced that they're going to appeal this decision, which means that he won't see any, you know, punishment for this crime until after the appeal. And the appeal will not happen until after the election. So barring extremely unforeseen circumstances, there is essentially no way that we are going to see a Donald Trump running in the election from inside of prison type situation, as some people have said. You know, a lot of people were making jokes about that, but it just doesn't seem likely. It doesn't seem like, it doesn't seem that it's going to happen at all. Um, and on top of this, not to be a, you know, uh, you know, a uh, wet blanket, but um, for this type of crime, uh, and I'm not a lawyer, but I have gone and read a few articles about this, but for this type of crime, uh, prison time is uh, exceedingly uncommon, and that's ev that's for people who are not uh, nearly 80 years old and also former presidents of the United States of America. Um, falsifying business documents, even multiple charges of it, does not usually result in prison time uh, for most offenders. Uh, so the likelihood that he's going to be locked up in any meaningful way from this particular case um, is pretty low, you know, for all the people who were, you know, excited to maybe see what would happen, um, which, you know, I am not a member of the nothing ever happens uh, crowd because, um, I think that amazing and wonderful and interesting and powerful political things are happening every single day, but they kind of might have, they might've gotten a little bit of a point on this one, uh, given how much of a deal everybody was making about this trial. The liberal news spheres were obsessed with this trial. They have been breathlessly covering it. Even the boring, sleepy, uh, fake centrists like Tim Pool have been covering the hell out of this. I, like I said, uh, I am not a member of the nothing ever happens uh, category of, pe of like team of political co commentators because I believe 
interesting and fascinating things politically are happening every single day. Um, they just don't happen in the world of electoral politics, usually. However, um, they might have gotten a small point on this one. Um, and the reason why I say that is because uh, the, the news organizations, all these shows that have obsessed over this trial, people have been talking about this trial all the time, all over the internet for months now. They've been obsessing over it. Everybody kept saying, oh, there's a chance that Donald Trump goes to jail. They're going to get him. And they got him. And he's definitely not going to jail, and he's definitely just going to appeal, which further kicks the can down the road. And even though, yes, technically now he is the first former president to be a convict, to be a convicted felon, it doesn't necessarily change anything at all. We don't know that it's going to change anything. So, you know, I don't know. They might have they gotten a little bit of a point, you know? I'm happy that everybody got to have fun, though, making fun of the, the angry Trumpers. And I'm, I'm certainly always ready to see Donald Trump squirm. Um, God knows that, uh, that, you know, he's acted with uh, complete disregard uh, for anyone but his own uh, shitty well-being uh, for his entire life, but for his entire time in public office and beyond. Um, so it's definitely funny to see his life uh, suck by having to spend every single day in a courthouse uh, for actions that he very obviously did commit. You know, I'm not, it's not like I'm, like, me or anyone else is taking pleasure in something unjust. Like, this guy did do the things that he's in trouble for, and uh, they are shitty things that he did, you know? Uh, but, but I just, I don't think we should, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I can't, I can't myself get that excited about it, you know? We did get that, uh, the, the free, uh, free Father Teresa, uh, image. That one's great. Gotta love that one. This one's, this one's gonna go down in history, okay? The, uh, the libs finally got their counter image to the S screaming SJW meme. Look at this. Are you, are you ready? Look at this. The libs... They got it. They finally got it. It took so long, but they got it. Two. Two! And both of them just as good as the last. Just magical, okay? It's so ma it's so perfect. It, it's it the conspiratorial part of my brain goes this guy knew what he was doing, right? Some some liberal deep plant was like, this is our chance, everybody. I wish that I had more uh, conservative seething to share with you, but the sad thing is that I pretty much don't. Except, except, for one exception. I have one, one gift to impart onto you that will hopefully raise our spirits because once again, our boy, Tim pool, he had a little oopsie on his stream for about the 30th time and I, and we can watch it. So let's watch it. Shall we? I'll put it this way. Should Democrats be in jail? No question. When Donald Trump gets elected, should he start locking them up? No question. Should there be lists of Democrats that need to go to jail? 100%. And the reason for that is they, they've committed crimes. We need to make sure that when Donald Trump wins, we've got an attorney general, a deputy attorney general, a head of the CIA and the FBI. Uh, Cash Patel would be fantastic. We can have attorney general. There are some names floating around. And then they can start uh, having their investigators and, and the feds issuing subpoenas, pulling up evidence, and with real evidence, bring them to judges for warrants. Then these people can spend three, three years of their lives fighting tooth and nail for the crime against the, uh, the government for crimes they committed and we can prove. Yeah. And the reason why we put them on trial is that we can show the whole world we will uncover what you've done. We will make sure everyone knows and you will be held accountable for it. Not just jail. They should get the death penalty. You know, we actually used to have the punishment for treason in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see that again? 
<laughs> Sorry, I actually pressed That's the button. That's a jail. They should get the death penalty. You know, we actually used to have the punishment for treason in this country. <laughs> That's right. Tim Pool pressed the panic button again. That's like that's like the fifteenth time in the last calendar year that he's pressed the panic button on one of his guests. Literally just yanked the Ethernet cable out of the wall there. Oh, just mwah, beautiful. It's incredible. Now, there is so much I could say about that clip. In addition to the 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 Ethernet cable yank, uh, uh, that's incredible. Um, that was Laura Loomer. Yeah, that's Laura Loomer. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but I don't know. Like, I kind of, it just kind of says everything, right? Like, wh where is, where, where, where are the conservatives at right now? Do, is anybody really compelled by anything that Tim Pool said there? Tim Pool's argument there was, uh, was, uh, boring, stumbling, nonsensical he basically said we should do what they just did to donald trump which you know he did do a crime he definitely did do that but we should do that to them too and then laura to her credit comes in and is just like oh yeah w tim you're on the wrong page bro your your rhetoric is out of date and and you know she's right about she's right to, she's right about her own movement on that front. It, Tim's rhetoric is out of date. The, the Republicans ha, are, are do not care about rule of law uh, as a as a principle. They care about it as a slogan. When they say law and order, they know what they mean when they say law and order. They don't mean actually, you know, we're going to purely adhere to the rule of law and the and the text of the law and the spirit of the law. They mean we're going to bring our loyal cops down on your head. And Laura, you know, like I said, to her credit, is honest enough to say what she really thinks while Tim Pool is dancing and flopping all over the place. Now, um, obviously, what Laura said is fucking insane. That's deranged. Um, but it is what the, that is where the Republican Party is at right now. The Republican Party has nothing left except for uh, mask off. We are going to take control and we are through any effort that we can. And we are going to try to do violence to you. We are going to do violence to those that we hate. And you can actually see this in the way that they talk about every other topic right now. Um, the people who are energized on the right, the ones who have energy, uh, are um, not the ones that are trying to keep their masks on anymore. It is the, uh, we talked about the gun tubers. It's the gun tubers openly making jokes uh, in their videos, uh, jokes that they, they cut the joke off where they go, well, when you're aiming down your sights and you see a F slur, but they cut the the end of it off. Or you see a T slur and you cut the end off. They cut the end of the joke off. It, those guys, those guys are, are, are saying where their intentions are, which is raw violence used to impose their worldview. Tim Pool is out of his depth. The only thing that is encouraging to I'll me- I'll put it this way. Oh, it's playing again. The only thing that's encouraging to me in all of this is the fact that uh, I think there are a lot more Tim Pools overall than there are Laura Loomers. There are definitely, uh, there's definitely the active members of the movement are the Laura Loomers, but I don't think there's that many of them. I think uh, a lot of the conservatives are just tired out. I think they're defeated they're 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 running low on on they can't drink Bud Light anymore. They're tired of the uh, of the of the shitty other beers. They're uh, they're 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 lazy, you know. They've been eating their Trump branded chips, and they're running out of money because they're expensive as hell. And I can hope that that energy uh, uh, that energy deficit will be enough to make sure that Donald Trump does not win the presidency. But uh, 
I don't think this conviction is going to be what makes him lose. Um, and uh, as we know, it's a race to the bottom right now between Trump and Biden as far as who can become the less popular candidate. I, like, I don't even know. Like, I don't know how you could even deny that. It is just a race to the bottom. Uh, Biden is struggling in the polls uh, and Trump is struggling in the polls and both of them are having massive... Uh, massive uh disengagement from the vote because neither of them is interesting or compelling as a candidate so it's coming down to a matter of uh who is going to make more people care less it's american politics is so sad right now if he gets in, what do you think will happen? Asks Celestial Wolves. Do you think Project 2025 will happen? Um, yeah. Uh, I think that Donald Trump... I, I think that if Donald Trump gets into office, it's going to get pretty goddamn bad. Um, the, the, the extremists who are still riding with Donald Trump because he's their only option... Um, have uh, truly deranged uh, ideas of what they want to Im implement in this country. Um, if they get in and he's able to act as a as an you know to open the door for them having power again, uh, I think it's going to be a disaster, an unprecedented and unmitigated disaster. Um, and so I I really hope that Donald Trump won't get in. Um, I really, really, really hope that. And, uh, I, I hope that people are, are, uh, willing to vote against him. The problem that I see is that, uh, Joe Biden doesn't seem to be taking this race seriously at all. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's shocking, in fact, how not serious the Democratic Party seems to be about beating Trump right now. Um, and, uh... Yeah, Project 2025 is a goddamn nightmare. Um, basically, for those who aren't familiar with Project 2025, the basic outline of Project 2025 is it is a plan that has been put together by a bunch of conservative think tanks um, as to how they can um, essentially break down all remaining checks and balances uh, in office and forcibly impose on a federal level uh, rules and uh, and uh, an environment that will be extremely beneficial to extremists getting their way. Uh, it is ex it is severely anti-democratic. It is a uh, a goal to impose right-wing rulership by force, by hook and by crook, um, and uh, and and I find it very concerning. And also. The fact that they're outlining it the way that they are is a sign that there are there is definitely an element within the Republicans that are ready to uh, throw off uh, all, you know, illusions of democratic uh, uh, principle at all. Now we all know that that the Republicans at the best of times do not adhere to any real democratic principles, but they pretend to most of the time. Um, but they don't here with Project 2025. The Project 2025. Um, explicitly advocate, advocates for using the U.S. military to impose a bias towards right-wing rule. It's absurd. So, um, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's very scary and that we live in extremely concerning times. And I think the, uh, the liberal, the liberal smugness with which uh, uh, with which we, or that we see all over the place, um, is really, really bad. It's a very bad sign. I wanted to talk about one more thing before we sort of wrap up this segment, um, which is, is that, uh, t speaking on liberal smugness, uh, I recently put out a video on my channel that is called, uh, Just Vote, and it's written in the little funny SpongeBob lettering, you know? And it was addressing um, the fact that just screaming just vote at people is a really, really bad electoral strategy um, that comes off extremely condescending, especially when you consider the fact that the reason why people feel troubled at this current moment is because they are being asked to choose between uh, uh, Donald Trump 
and a guy who is actively supporting a genocide um, and who has also ignored his own so-called red line as Israel uh, uh, unleashed unprecedented violence into a densely packed uh, refugee area at the Rafa border crossing, which, according to uh, the, the, the Biden administration, was supposed to be a red line. Uh, Israel, uh, uh, Israel's attack made that. Do you guys remember a couple months ago when Biden was talking about how they're going to build a, a floating pier that was supposed to be able to deliver aid to people in Gaza? Well, guess what? Israel's attack made that made that pier um, uh, suffer damage like indirectly, they couldn't get there and continue working on it. And now they've abandoned the peer project after spending $350 of American tax payer money uh, on the uh, humanitarian aid peer. So even Biden's promise of a humanitarian aid peer, which everybody was praising, is in the trash now. And he didn't hold up his promise about the red line, which was previously, they said that if any attacks were done against the Rafa border crossing, um, that they would, uh, that they would, they would, that would be the line in the sand that they would, uh, that they would not stand for the Israeli government doing that. And they've ignored that. So during this period, I think with all of that in mind, that just yelling at people, just vote is a very bad strategy. The response that I got to saying that from self-identified liberals was nothing short of heinous. In fact, I wanted to read you real quick one of the things that was said to me in response to my video. So I wanted to read this out real quick. Okay, listen to this. This is a quote from somebody who left a comment on my video. Quote, you don't believe in incrementalism or the voting for lesser evils. When fascism happens, you will be the first against the wall. And a lot of us will take small pleasure in this. If you aren't going to try and at least preserve democracy, we will happily relish in your destruction. That's a quote of a self-identified liberal, okay? I've, I've gone and checked through their posts. They truly believe that they're a liberal. And that was their response to me saying, hey, when I say you should vote, but just screaming at people, just vote, when they are seriously dealing with a moral crisis is a terrible electoral strategy and it threatens to give the election to one of the worst possible presidents I can imagine. That's a bad thing. That was their response. And that's not even the only response I got like that. In fact, that was the second response of that day that I received of that exact nature. The other one wasn't quite as vulgar, but it was the same exact sentiment. I think I am very worried about the future of federal politics in the United States. And I really hope um, that these liberals who spend a lot of time on the internet yelling at other people will do their part, really put their money where their mouth is. Because a lot of us are. A lot of us lefty types are out pushing for a better world every single day. And I've seen, and I'll say this to the credit of the lefties, I've seen a lot of lefties actively encouraging their audiences to get involved in politics in one way or another. And I don't see all that many uh, liberals doing the same thing. I see a lot of liberals yelling about just vote. I see a lot of liberals being smug. I see a lot of liberals basically Jeff Tiederick posting and acting very smug and self-assured. I saw, you know, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden making memes that sucked. It's definitely very concerning to me. But who knows? Maybe the conviction of Donald Trump will actually have an impact on things. Maybe. Uh, maybe I'll be wrong. And, and uh, they'll find a way to make sure that he's 
paying for his crimes before the election comes up. But according to every single news site that I've read so far, his appeal basically guarantees that he will be able to continue his electoral run uninhibited, which is bad news. And I think that liberals and everyone else should take that seriously because I do think that Donald Trump becoming president would be a very, very bad thing. But I also uh, don't know how much can be done about it at this point. Uh, leftists like myself and others, we don't control the Democratic Party. We don't control the Democratic Party and we they don't want us in the Democratic Party. They made their statement about lefties uh, uh, many times over. You know, Biden has been very clear about his position towards the left. So we can only do so much, which means the libs out there, you guys better get cracking. And the rest of us, we have to acknowledge that we are in a position where we need to take care and prepare and engage in our politics to the best of our ability. Because uh, the best case scenario come November is that we are still dealing with, uh, as, as he's now known, Genocide Joe. <sighs> anyway, that's about all I have to say on this particular subject. I want to thank you for listening to me talk about it. And I want to say, do not die. Make sure you press subscribe down below and leave me a comment. Hopefully not one as weird and, uh, uh, and deranged as uh, some of the libs, offended libs, uh, decide to do. Anyway, thanks for watching.